right, so to start the review, we're going to look at page 89 and fill in the bottom down here. Um, here's the unit circle part that we did have all filled in. So we have all of our degrees, all of our radians, and then the ordered pairs. So remember that the ordered pairs give you the sine and cosine values for each of these angles. And that's one of the main things we're going to be reviewing today. And um, regardless of how we're talking about trig, just anything you ever graph ever, in the first quadrant, your x and y are both positive, right? Second quadrant, x is negative, y is positive. Every single time ever. Always has been, always will be, right? So we use that idea to help us figure out whether or not a sine or cosine value would be positive or negative in whatever quadrant we're in. We're going to look at with these angles, we have to know what quadrant we're in. That gives us the sign, the S-I-G-N, not the S-I-N-E, the, the positive or negative sign. And then we can get the value from these ordered pairs. All we have to know to figure out all of them is the sine and cosine values, because that can help us get everything else we need, and then just to know which quadrant we're in. So that's what we're going to fill in here, which we did have this written down on some other notes. It just didn't get written down on here. Um, but when we have positive, so this positive trig value, so just draw a little x and y. That's positive. Second quadrant, x is negative, y is positive. Third quadrant's negative, negative. Fourth quadrant's positive. That's old news, right? So in quadrant one, everything is always positive. So all of our trig values are positive in quadrant one. What's the reciprocal of sine? Cosecant. Good. Okay. Values because the y value. Positive. So tangent is positive, and so is its reciprocal, which is cotangent. So in quadrant four, x is positive, tangent is y over x, so it's negative, and so is the sine. So the only thing positive is the cosine value and its reciprocal, which is secant. Okay. The reciprocal is tangent and cotangent go together. You know sine and cosine don't. Um, and you know, if you're, it's not going to be cosine and cosecant. The two C's don't go together. The two S's don't go together. So it should be pretty easy for you to, you know, keep them separate or whatever you need to do. All right, so our values then are is cosine theta, sine theta. All right, that's my X and my Y. Talking strictly about the unit circle right now because it's the unit circle, the length of the radius is what? One. The length of the radius is one. That's why it's called a unit circle. This really does apply to any circles, but since it's a unit circle, we don't have to worry about the radius because we basically end up dividing by one. So what we're putting here for like sine of theta is the y value. If it wasn't a unit circle, it would actually be y divided by the radius, but we're not worried about that since the radius is one. You with me on that? So I'm just telling you, like eventually it'll look a little different, but right now we're strictly focused on the unit circles. Sine of theta, because of our ordered pair, is just the y value. Cosine is just the x value. It is sine over cosine, so that's y over x, or you know, opposite over adjacent. Right? So cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so it's 1 over y. Secant is 1 over x. And cotangent is x over y. Everybody good with that? That is a review, so if it sounds brand new, I'm a little worried, but that, you know, we've already talked about that. Okay, now check out or get the notes that you when you walked in. Um, these are parts of this identical to some other notes you have, because um, I broke this apart to make the other ones, and so I put some things back together. So this isn't identical to anything you've done, but pieces of it are. Um, because it wouldn't hurt to review all of it for sure. 
So reference angles, they are simple, super simple, but I got some crazy reference angle answers on that test, and I feel like it's because you're trying to make it way harder than it is. I think you've kind of, some of you just missed the simplicity of it, and you're trying to do I don't know what. So, but these are important. This is what's going to help. If we don't understand how to get a reference angle easily, we can't find those other values that we're going to need. So um, it says, here are the key parts to this. It says, for an angle in standard form, the reference angle is the positive acute angle. It's always positive. It's always acute. And it's always made the terminal side in the x-axis. We don't care about the y-axis. We're only looking at the x. So it's made by the terminal side in the x-axis. So 120 degrees. What quadrant is that in? Two. Here's my angle. I start here at zero. Then this is 90, so to get to 120, I have to go 30 more, which is about a third of the way. So here's my 120 degree angle. And then my reference angle is the shortest way back to the x axis, which would be right here. So if my purple angle is 120, my reference angle is 60, because that's how much farther I have to go to get to 180. Yes? So then this 330, what quadrant is it in? Because if I go all the way around, it's 360, I'd have to back up 30 degrees, which means that my reference angle is 30 degrees. The reference angle is either how much farther you have to go to get to the x-axis or how much you have to back up, one of the, that sort of thing. Um, the negative 225, I mean, I'm going clockwise, right? And what quadrant would I end up in? The second, right? Because this is 80 and that's 270. So I'm in the second quadrant. So after I hit 180, how much farther do I go? 45. So this is my negative 225. My reference angle then would be 45 degrees. And it's always positive. It does not matter which direction you have to go to make the angle. That means nothing. Right? It's just a, it's more like a distance type thing. Now I can for any angle. Like, for instance, what's the reference angle for 170? 10 degrees, right? Does that make sense? But if we're only talking about the special angles, which we are here, then you only have three choices. It's 30, 45, or 60. That's it. Okay? They're always acute, so they have to be first quadrant angles. So those are the only three options you have when we're focused strictly on these. Okay? I'm not saying it's the only one you'll ever get for a reference angle, but that's all that's really happening. Okay? And just go with the 180 or the 360. All right, so now radian angles. You should get at the point you don't have to convert to get out. I can tell you the very first time, like, if the radians aren't there for you yet, go ahead and convert. We be past that by now. I have five pi six. Think about this one. In starting here. I'm starting here. Three, six, thinking about pi, since this is 5 pi 6, I want to think about it as 6 pi over 6, right? So from here to here, it's over 6, but I don't quite get there, right? This is my 5 pi over 6, is then that my reference angle is pi over 6, because that would be one more that I'd have to go. Then on number five, I'm going to think in thirds. I'm here. This would give me three pi thirds, right? This would give me six pi thirds. So I got to go one more to get to here. That is my seven pi thirds. Yes. So my reference angle is what? Pi thirds. Now I think in fourths, and this is negative, so I have to go clockwise. This would give me four pi fourths, right? All the way around would give me eight fourths, but I don't quite make it, so I back up one. This is my negative seven pi fourths, so my reference angle is. Your reference angles are way easier than in degrees because the denominator gives it away. 
right? If I have 29 pi 6, guess what? The reference angle is pi 6. Now I'm going to have to think about what quadrant I'm in, you know, how many rotations I went, but I can get the reference angle real quick. And again, this, I could ask you about anything, but when we're talking just the special angles, if the denominators are 3, 4, or 6, it's pi thirds, pi fourths, pi sixths. Those are your only options you've got. Okay, so don't make the reference angles harder than they are, than they need to be, because it'll just end up giving you more confusion in the, in the future. Okay, any questions about reference angles? We good? All right. So now we're going to use these to find these values. We're going to do it a little bit differently than what the directions say, though, because <clears throat> the directions say to use reference angles in the trig values. We could totally do that, but there's no, what we unit circle is we used those special, uh, special right triangle values to put things on the unit circle, so there's no reason to backtrack. Um, basically, we just kind of skipped the special right triangle part of this because it's easier to do with the unit circle, and that's how you do it in the end anyway. So, um, and if we can do it in degrees, we can do it in radians, we'll go ahead and do it with both. But there's certain things that you have to think about as you go along. Not just because I said you have to write it down. This is how I do it, too. If I just look at cosecant of negative 2 pi third, I, well, at this point, I just know what it is because I've done it all day. But, on, you know, you ask me tomorrow, I won't remember. But I can think, of, like, two, through two steps, and I can get there to the answer. That's what you need to be able to do. Not necessarily calculate anything. Just know your first quadrant and think through what you need to think through quickly, and you can get there. Write it down, though. I write it down for myself because if I don't, Remember what I just thought, and I just have to go think it again. Write down, but you'll you'll shoot your, you can write it down your own thought process. No, what quadrant? Because we need to know the quadrants is so we know the signs, right? Now, we're going to always we can just go ahead and say, I'm going to find the side of the space, so I need to know what quadrant is 120 in. Second one, right? So it's in quadrant two. In quadrant two, is sine positive or negative? Positive. Positive, okay? We need the quadrant to know if our final answer is going to be positive or negative. Then we also need the reference angle. For 120, what is the reference angle? 60, okay? So since my final answer is positive, then whatever the sign of 60 is, is my answer, because these two things are the same. And basically, the value is the same every time. Is the positive or negative. So all we have to know what quadrant we're in. Because in the second quadrant, sine is the y value, all the values are positive, right? So then what's, what's the way that can help you remember I didn't look at any of this. Uh, if I'm doing six, the sign of six. Positive, my answer is a square root of 3 over 2, and I'm done. Is every Before it's negative, it's going to be Number 8. So, number 8, is there a typical of 
what? Cosine. This is one over cosine theta. I'm going to write that down, or I'll have to go just have that thought again. What quadrant is 225 in? Three. Okay, good. So it's in the third quadrant. And so in the third quadrant, is cosine positive or negative? Negative. negative. And then your reference angle for 225 is what? 45 degrees. Okay. Okay, so you said that there's four things. Really, these two are tied together. It's why you need it. There's really three, and sometimes there's just two. So 45 degrees. Actually, don't the reciprocal of that. I could write it as over, but that just makes a fraction and a fraction. Whether I have it written like this or not, you understand that it's just the reciprocal, right? So instead of the square root of 2 over 2, it's going to be negative 2 over the square root of 2. It's the reciprocal because it's actually secant and not cosine. You with me on that? So then, am I allowed to leave it like that? No. So I have to rationalize. That gives me negative 2 squared of 2 over 2, which is just negative square root of 2. Now, you're, I'm not saying you always have to write down every step. Once you get to this or even have it thought, it, I know most of you can probably just rationalize it in your head and know what you get in the end, and that's fine. Um, but in your notes, I don't want to lose you. And as far as the tangent values are concerned, we will look at the pattern in those. And just like you should know the sine and cosine pretty quickly, the tangent ones you'll learn. If you don't have them at this point, that's OK, because we can find them. But we'll look at them in the next few days just so we can see those patterns as well. OK, we all good so All right, let's look at 9. Let, we want the tangent. Now, that's not sine or cosine, so I have to figure out how it's related. It's tangent. Sine of cosine. So it's the sine of theta over the 11 over 6. What quadrant is that? Fourth, because 12 pi over 6 would be 2 pi, right? So I have to back up one. So I'm in quadrant 4. In quadrant 4, is tangent positive or negative? Negative, right? And your reference angle pi over 6. Okay. So this is what leads me to my answer. Probably. So pi 6 is what in degrees? 30, 30 degrees. So this is here. And so I want this, and I need sine angles. And instead of putting a fraction and a fraction again, I'm going to write it down as a division just because it fits better. Um, so I want basically the sine divided by the cosine. That's what that means. So the sine is 1 half. So when you divide fraction, flip and multiply, right? We get this. The twos cancel out, so I'm going to have 1 over the square root of 3. And that rationalizes to the square root of 3 over 3. And remember, it needs to be negative. In number 8, I put the negative down in the front and did it along with it. On number 9, every class period except for today, I forgot to do that. And so I actually thought about it this period, but I decided to leave it off on purpose this time. Um, because it's fine that I didn't do it at the beginning. You just want to make sure in the end that if it's supposed to be negative, your answer is Wait until the end to take it. Fine, too. Just know that that's where it's coming. Are we all good? Yes, ma'am. Never mind. You sure? Because it divides, so that would make it negative anyway. Yes. Right. Are we just in the fourth quadrant? Yes. Quadrant? But we can, okay, because in the fourth quadrant, the only thing that's positive is cosine. Why? Anything else? All right, cosecant. What's the reciprocal of cosecant? Sine. Sine. So it's 1 over sine theta. All right, so negative 2 pi thirds. What quadrant is that in? Third quadrant. Good. So in the third quadrant, is sine positive or negative? Negative. And then your reference angle is pi thirds. Now, just remember, the positive or negative part here has absolutely nothing to do with the angle is positive or negative. Those are two 
completely unrelated. So yeah, these both happen to be negative, but this isn't negative because this is. This is negative because of the quadrant it lands in. So just make sure you got that down. Um, I'm sorry, what? Exactly, yeah. All right, so pi thirds, right? Got this, and I need the sine of pi thirds, that's the square root of 3 over 2. But I don't really want the sine, I want the reciprocal of that. So instead of writing down the square root of 3 over 2, I'm going to write down the reciprocal, which is 2 over the square root of 3. And I'll go ahead and put the negative on it this time. So I'm not allowed to leave it like that, so I have to rationalize it and get negative 2 square root of 3. And that might seem like, okay, that's not that quick to think through, but it is. Once you get the hang of it, it doesn't take as long as when I talk you through it. You'll be able to kind of process through those things pretty quickly. Okay, we good? But it's fine that you need to jot things down every now and then. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. It just shouldn't take, you know, any more work than this, really. We good? Okay. So, quadrantal angles. This is definitely a review. This exact same thing was on another set of notes. But on that set of notes, I told you you were supposed to write but then I didn't make you do it when you needed to, so I'm going to make you write it this time. It lands on an axis. It's not in the quadrant. It's a quadrantal angle. So I'm at zero. It's a quad I'm not in a quadrant because I'm on the axis. So I would say that the angle is quadrantal. And no, you can't abbreviate it and it'll look like quadrant or quadrilateral or quadratic or whatever, so it won't kill you. Just write it out. And then you need to clarify it's on the positive x-axis. The thing that will help you, though, with this, because if, if the question says what quadrant are you in, this would be your answer right here. But if I'm trying to figure out a value like we just did, um, the sign takes care of itself on these, so I don't really care about it being positive or negative. What helps me instead is what the ordered the ordered pair. When my point ends here, what would this ordered pair be? One zero. Cool for we just did. All right, then for infinity or pi halves, this again is quadrantal, and this is on the positive y-axis, and then the ordered pair that would help me here would be 0, 1. We're at 180 or at pi. Again, it's quadrantal. This is on the negative x-axis, and the ordered pair is Oops, not that. Come on. Is it negative one, zero? Okay, then the last one, if you got the hang of this, quadrantal. And this ordered pair here would be. Zero, negative one. Right? We're good. All right. Any questions at this point? <clears throat> okay. So the first one here is a repeat of what we just wrote on the little pink thing, but we're going to write it on here again because once again, your radius is one. This is your x value. This is your y value. So if Now, R has and so the sine of thing, cosine is x, tangent is sine over cosine, so it's y over x, and then the next pair are just the reciprocals. We'll just write it again, kind of just reinforce it once again. And the order pairs are cosine theta, sine theta. Oops, sorry. All right, so then we have the 16 unit circle we already know and love. It's used to map pi, 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 and pi thirds. 
are 30, 45, 60 degrees. And they're multiples, so that basically gives me 100. If I can do the first quadrant, we can do all of the rest. Uh, there are other angles that you can get from the unit circle, meaning um, if I know that pi sixths is 30 degrees, then what would pi twelfths be? 15 degrees. So, so you can use it to figure out other things, but you know, pi ninths that might not be so, or pi you know elevenths that might not be something you want to figure out. That would convert differently, but you can still kind of use the concepts. Um, that as well as zero or two pi, pi halves, pi and three pi halves, which are the quadrants. Now, to get this last part, we're going to, you know, if you had your unit circle sitting in front of you, sure, you could just pull the answers off for some of them, but don't do it that way, because when it's not sitting in front of you, you won't know how to do it. You need to check yourself. That's absolutely fine. I would always suggest using it, you know, to reinforce what you just did, but um, we need to try and figure it out without staring at it, because first of all, you want to, even though you recreate it, you definitely don't want to take the time to recreate it every single time. So we're going to do the same kind of thing we did on the front. We're not going to do every single one of these. We are going to do all of the big ones. Um, this is probably the same questions that we're going to do. All of the radial ones. Um, two of the radial ones. So the, what we have to have is this whole all students take calculus. And if it helps, if you need to actually write All right, so 135. What quadrant is 135 in? Second, right? Because it's less than 180 but greater than 90. And in the second quadrant, is sine positive or negative? Positive. positive. And then my reference angle here would be? Are we good? All right. Any questions about that? So then let's look at number 12. Secant. So secant is the reciprocal of what? Cosine. So this is 1 over cosine of theta. What quadrant are we in? It's quadrantals. It doesn't actually ask me what quadrant I'm in, so I don't need to write out quadrantal and all that stuff, unless that was like the question. But what's going to help me with this is the ordered pair. So at 180, what's your ordered pair? And, zero. and so that order gives me my cosine and my sine, right? Secant. So the cosine is the negative one, right? Vote your answer is negative one. Okay, okay with that? Negative 300 is cotangent. So we know that tangent is sine over cosine, so cotangent is cosine over sine? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right, because it's just the reciprocal. Negative 300, what quadrant is that in? First quadrant. And everything in the first quadrant is positive. What would your reference angle be? 60. Okay. All right, so my reference angle is 60. divided by the sine, which is the square root of 3 over 2. So that's just 1 half times 2 over the square root of 3. So that leaves me with 1 over the square root of 3, which just ends up being square root of 3 over 3, and it's supposed to be positive, and that's my value. Okay. Everybody good with that? Okay. No, you're not good with that? <laughs> um, cosecant. What's the of theta? 
120 second is positive or negative and then angle 60 okay. degree Tangent is what over what? Sine over cosine. Good. 270. What quadrant am I in? It's a quadrantal. So what I really need here then is the ordered pair. So 270, what? So sine over cosine is y over x. So that gives me negative 1 over 0. What's that? Undefined. I've heard negative 1 and 0 as answers today. It is undefined. You have never been allowed to divide by 0. You will never be allowed to divide by 0. So, Whew, yeah. All right, so then we have cosine. So that's good. Cosine is just cosine. Negative 150 is what quadrant? Third, okay. So I'm in quadrant 3. Is cosine positive or negative then? Negative. And what's my reference angle? 30. So for 30 degrees, your cosine is square root of 3 over 2, and it's negative, so it's just negative square root of 3 over 2. All right, so let's look at the cosecant. of what? Sine. sine. So it's 1 over the sine of theta. Negative pi pi sixths, what quadrant am I in? Third. Third because if I'm here, neg this would be 6 pi sixths, but I don't quite make it, so I'm down here in the third quadrant. So I'm in the third quadrant. In the third quadrant, is sine positive or negative? Negative. Remember, your sine is your y value, right? So just picture the third quadrant, all the y values are negative, so sine is negative. It's negative. And what's your reference angle? Pi over 6 is 30, yeah. So it's pi over 6, because remember when it's a radians, it's really, I don't even have to do a whole lot of subtractions. So make sure you know. Right? And this is negative, so it's just negative. Everybody okay with that? Do you see the thought process to go through there? Yes? So, um, I'm going to give you the homework in just a second, and we, I want to do the first one with you so you understand the, how the worksheet itself works. Go ahead and glue or tape these in. Um, so it was... I want y'all to start the semester off well. I've already started off with a mistake, but I count this as a last semester mistake because I turned these in in December. It didn't get copied upside down like everything else in your ISN, so flip it easily. So I apologize, but I'm going to count and still start off well. So let me give you the. I'm um, to work. Let's work one with you. Yes, that goes on 94, and then 93 is just the title page, just for six weeks. All right, so you can't really tell which is the front and the back here because I didn't even put a name blank, but I want you to start with the one where you have tangent of 5 pi thirds is where you start. So look at, find that side. It looks like this. Both sides work the same way. Um, this is the one I decided to do as an example. So here's where we're going to start, and basically we just did all the examples. Start off by looking at this and saying, all right, the tangent of 5 pi thirds. First of all, I know that tangent is sine 
over cosine, right? Five pi thirds, what quadrant is that in? Fourth, right? Because six pi thirds will be two pi, and you back up a little bit. So I'm in quadrant four. In quadrant four, is tangent positive or negative? Negative, because the only thing that's positive is, is the C, which is cosine, right? So it's negative. And what's your reference angle here? Real easy. Don't, pi thirds. Don't overthink it. It's pi thirds. It's easy to find. Okay? So there's all my pieces that I need. So pi thirds, I'm going to need square root of 3 over 2 divided by the cosine, which is 1 half. So that's really a square root of 3 over 2 times 2 over 1, right? You're going to cancel. So I'm left with the square root of 3, but it's supposed to be negative, negative square root of 3. Now on the tangent and cotangent ones, you have to write a little bit more than the rest of them, but that should still be enough room, hopefully. You won't have to write as much on all of them. So now that I have that as my answer, I have one, two, three, four, five different answers coming off this box. So it's negative square root of three is this one. So I shade this one, and then I move on to this question. And then I work this one. And I have a couple choices to move from there. So this is kind of a self-checking exercise, meaning that if you get an answer and it doesn't match anything coming off that box, you're wrong. Go figure out what you did wrong. Or if you get stuck somewhere, something you know got you to the wrong place. Um, so it should help you kind of find your errors pretty quickly. Um, but anyway, so you do this and then you shade that one. You may not even end up doing every single one of them. Okay. Your side takes you to the back or anything. Don't overthink that either. Uh, but you do have to do both sides. So it's just two different mazes. Okay. Are we good? And if you, the more you do this, the easier it's going to be. That's why I just wanted you to have some practice ones to do it over and over again. And then we'll have it down. We'll be able to move forward. Okay. Any questions at all? Awesome. All right. So work on that a little bit until the bell rings.